Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How very nice to see a full house. The applause is probably yeah. more than I've ever had at the end of a play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope we get some at the end. Well, maybe we won't. Um, so we're, we have an elephant in the room, and um, what it is is next Tuesday there's a certain occasion, a certain birthday that we're not possibly allowed to mention in any shape or form, I believe. Is well, that true? Well, that's a shape you've already mentioned. I'm sorry. <coughs> but I'm not form. attaching a number to it, Judy. That's the idea. Okay. Which, but it's still a lovely, uh, this is the excuse for being back, for having Judy back, which is always lovely. And it's been a long time since we've done one of these, so it's very nice to have you back. Let's hope we've got some new jokes this time. Um, Judy, I would love, though, to try and do a quick whistle-stop tour through a fairly distinguished career. And I wonder if we could go right back to the old Vic. Oh, right. And uh, when you were cast in Ophelia, which was a bit of a risk... I believe. Yes, it was a huge risk, <clears throat> and uh, I had just uh, finished at the Central School, and, and, they, and the only, uh, Michael Bentall was running the five-year plan at the Old Vic, which was every play of Shakespeare's, and the only one he repeated was Hamlet, and he'd done Hamlet with Richard Burton, and then he did Hamlet with John Neville, and I got cast as Ophelia, straight out of drama school. Very, very lucky, but quite hard. Um, not easy going after that. But it was, it, you know, it was a good, um, it was a baptism of fire. And how was your Hamlet? <clears throat> Heaven. <laughs> a good leading man to start with? <clears throat> yes, well, it's simply wonderful. And I learnt an amazing, it was John Neville, and I learnt, I mean, I learnt almost, well, everything that I knew about the Vic when I went, when, you know, when I went to the Vic in 57 and left in 61. And everything I learnt about being an actor and being part of a company was really from John. And you were spied when you were playing that Ophelia by a certain Ian McKellen, I believe, who took a job in Oxford simply to have the opportunity to act with you in, in The Promise. This is entirely news to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably news to Ian McKellen, too, actually. IanMcKellen.com. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> you, Ian, and Ian McShane. Yes, the three of us, in a, in a play, yes. Uh, by Alexei Abruzov called The Promise, uh, which the three of us, and we never came off stage all the time. We were on stage the whole evening. It was very, very, very tiring, but quite fun. And it came from Oxford. And um, then during, I, during Oxford, Trevor Nunn asked me to be in something at the, at the RSC. And I said, that would be absolutely wonderful. I said, this, this, this play may transfer and, um, and in which case I won't be able... And he said, well, I've seen it, and I don't think it will transfer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it transferred. It transferred for nine months. So I wasn't able to go to Stratford, to Trevor. Not then, anyway. And you didn't go to Broadway with it? It went to Broadway and the fellas went? I think Eileen Atkins, did she? She did. Yes, she, she had did. a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that... It seems quite an interesting choice. I, I, there's a lovely thing it says on the poster of it that's on Ian's website. Three of the finest young actors of our time together, which is rather brilliant. Yes. It was a great... Ian McShane thought that Ian McKellen and I were out of the arc. <laughs> he really thought we were out of the arc. He had to come running in at one point, Ian McShane, with a, t with a tin mug, which I had to use subsequently in the scene, uh, and a spoon. And he used to come running in with such kind of gust that the spoon used to go sometimes there, the mug sometimes... There, were, there was nothing to act left to act. <laughs> and when you said, could you possibly just bring the mug and the spoon. He used to go, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> so did you take that play as a sort of radical choice and uh, a big hit behind the Iron Curtain? It can't have been an easy, uh, easy yes. Behind the Iron Curtain? The play had been a big hit. It had been a big hit, but it was Frank but Horser, not... you see, who chose it, and he had the most wonderful... Um, what's that word? <clears throat> What's that word when you have good, a good, um, good habit, you know, good uh, instinct? What's instinct. that word? <laughs> I hope you're here when I do another play. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, he, had, he, he was impeccable at reading a play and kind of knowing what would go, Frank. Um, and he ran Oxford for all that time, and we had a lovely time. And I, 
I did another play by Alexei Abruzzo called The Twelfth Hour, wow. where John Turner, a tall actor, and I had a rather passionate kiss. And the only way we could possibly do it was that I should fall exhausted onto a lump of wood where <laughs> he, would then, he would then be able to, you know, somehow manoeuvre me into some kind of embrace. And not long after that, Sally Bowles in Cabaret. Which yes. It, it surprised a lot of people that, again, you took that, your first musical. It was. It was my first musical, and it was because Hal Prince saw The Promise and said, um, will you come and audition? Or he said to my agent, will you come and audition? So uh, I did go. I got very, very, very frightened beforehand, and I had a drink, and when it came to auditioning, um, I actually stood in the wings by the piano, and he, heard, he was out here, and I sang it from there. I think something like Happy Birthday to you, <laughs> but having never, uh, you know, sung before. But... Um, you know, the thing about Sally Bowles is, if you go by Christopher Isherwood's book, I'm a Camera, is that she was a, you know, couldn't sing, and a m middle class girl from Cheltenham, and couldn't sing, but there was something about her that you couldn't you know, kind of take your mm. eyes off or stop watching. And so I used to read that every single night. I used to read the, just this bit in the book. Um, <clears throat> and I was sent to a wonderful, wonderful opera singer called Gwen Catley. And uh, she kind of, I had some afternoons with her and she said, well, she said, I can't teach you to sing, but she said, I can teach you to put a song over. And that's, in fact, what she did. Let's and, just look know, at the proms. Yes. yes, and it was Hal who said, you know, you don't, don't speak in one voice and stop to sing in another. And that mm. stood me in incredibly good stead mm -hmm. for a long time. <clears throat> And um, I saw, there's a lovely bit of footage of that, tantalisingly, without the soundtrack. Uh, it, from, from, uh, they, they compiled lots of your interviews uh, on the BBC. And you say there that you talk talking experience, it's 1968, I think, of going into a room full of men, inevitably, from the film industry, who take one look at you and say, you'll never work in film, Miss Dench. And you report that, quite interestingly, on television there. Yes, it was a, it was a certain film that I was asked to go and see somebody about, and that is what he said. <clears throat> he said, not, not the right arrangement. He said, that's not, um, that's not quite right. <clears throat> and it wasn't then. It wasn't. Sure. I mean, it's only, you know, suddenly then they went all kind of ball ways and kind of cast anyone in films. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, it happened, but uh, it was true. He did say that. And, <clears throat> and did, were you I've being... I've never said who he is. No, best not. Uh, were you being provocative by reporting that as now. a young woman? Sorry. <laughs> 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 Were you being a little provocative by reporting that as a young actress? I think it's really no, I great that you do. It as a young no, actress. on television I only you talk about it. it. Yes, I reported it a bit later. Well, yeah. it, it stung me. I didn't yeah. realise, I think, how much it did at the time mm. because I had no intention of making a film. All I wanted to do was do Shakespeare and be at the Old Vic, and then come here and do it too. Um, <clears throat> but that's yes, do Shakespeare south of the river, right? Really, um, <laughs> and that's really all I ever wanted to do. And I, that's what I, you know, going to the Vic in 57 and staying there till 61 and then going to Stratford, it was my, it was, it, it was the kind of zenith. I loved it so much. And presumably the theatre didn't have that kind of terrible stipulation. You could be, as you were, Cleopatra, beautifully. Well, you still have to suspend a bit of belief, don't you? <laughs> I didn't. Um, but, you know, the wonderful thing about us being up here is we're much taller than all of you. And that's yeah. <laughs> it's a huge advantage when you're five, one and three quarters. Because you can actually create somebody who is much taller. I have people often say to me, oh gosh, I didn't realise you were that size. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but, you know, you can create an illusion in the theatre, I think. Cleopatra was here um, with, in with your, in the Ollie with your great uh, collaborator, Peter Hall. Um, and... Was that a role that you coveted, or did you have to be persuaded no, to no, play? No, 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 I, I didn't, I absolutely didn't covet it. I never, for a second, dreamt I would ever play it. And the terrible thing is, is that I said yes to Peter, and Terry Hands asked me to play it too, at the same time. And I said yes to Terry Hands as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't till I did Waste at the lyric that Terry Hands came round and somebody said, I found out. He said, who are you going to do it for? <laughs> so 
I had to say Peter because Peter had asked me first. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I was so flattered about being asked. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and um, yes, and then we did. I remember, and I remember being on the first night in the Ollie, saying to Tony Hopkins just before we came on, I said, people are actually being born and dying at this moment. You know, we de why are we in such a state? Much more important things mm. are happening than this. And, um, and we had a glorious time doing it, I must say. We didn't have mics then. No. Coming back down to the Littleton Theatre, absolute hell here. Um, yes. A really happy experience, oh, I believe. Oh, very. And we had done it already in, on television with Anthony Page. Um, and then uh, we came here and also did it with Anthony Page with a, with a slightly, well, an entirely different cast, mm. I think. Mm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we had a wonderful bar built on this stage. And you couldn't, you couldn't, once you were in there, you couldn't actually get out of it, this bar. <laughs> um, and I can remember one night uh, being on all fours behind the bar and saying to Greg Hicks, how can I feel so drunk <laughs> on water and a bit of red dye in it, you know, a bit of Ribena. And, but it was a, oh, a, it's the most glorious play. It's the play that if people say, what would you like to do now in half an hour, absolute hell is the one I would like to be doing. We had a, a, an incredible, it's the most marvellous play. Wonderful play. And, and now available on DVD on the TV. I just watched it last week. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, yes. uh, really good. When we did it before, yeah, yes. For, it's <laughs> terrific. Um, back up to the Olivier Theatre um, and a little night music, another foray, a big foray into the musical world. Uh, it wasn't, you'd done others in between. Good Actually, there was article. a very good moment during Anthony and Cleopatra when to Alan Bennett was doing Down Cemetery Road at the Cottesloe, which is well, the Dorfman or the Cottesloe. And <clears throat> I came out. During the play, I had my call, came out of my dressing room and met Alan Bennett. We started to talk and started to talk and walked downstairs. And as I put my foot on the Cottesloe stage, I realised that I actually should have been in the other. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Little no. Music. Little night music, more singing. <clears throat> but that, now that song has sort of become a bit of a trademark, that number. You did it live for the Nationals' 50th. You've done it at the proms. I did. did. That's the most frightening. Yeah, how was that? That was really frightening. Yeah. Did that was, especially as during the rehearsal, they said, and while they're doing the night waltz, you'll come on and be standing behind. And then in between that rehearsal and doing it in the evening at the proms, they must have come to some kind of other arrangement. Because as I went to go, they said, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> not yet, not yet. So I was like a you know greyhound in the slips. Yeah, I yeah. was. <laughs> so that's why that's why we, when you see it, I'm kind of running on late for the thing. Yeah, <clears throat> that's and, really frightening. And when you did it live here, um, what was going on with black gloves that night? I can't remember. Well. <laughs> That I, glove has passed so many times. I was... Now, that, I, I, was, I was charged with looking after you that, that night, and you never make demands, but the first thing you did was say, get me a black leather glove right now. So we obviously went to wardrobe, and we did. To give to Tim Piggott to Smith? To give it to Tim Piggott Smith. During the show? Well, not during. You know, in between. <laughs> Just subtly. Or maybe hmm. it was during, actually. I think actually, it was live it on was TV. During. You can oh, yes. see it on the DVD, Judy. I couldn't quite believe it. I'd, got, I'd gone into the house by that point, and I saw you handing it in the middle of the curtain call. It was in the curtain call, yes, yeah. it was. <clears throat> That's an old, old, old joke. Which is... That started at the Ollie. During, during Cleopatra? During, Anthony. Oh, everybody must have heard this story so many times. During Peggy's, Dame Peg's 80th birthday. And when, when Tim Piggott Smith, who was playing Octavius Caesar, and uh, came on to do a bit of Jewel in the Crown, and he was Merrick, you know, with that kind of thing, and I happened to say to him, that's strangely sexy, <laughs> that leather thing. So the next night, we g g went back to doing Anthony, and he came walking down the thing here with his hand like this, and the next minute, this terrible leather glove. <laughs> And so it has passed. When was Anthony? 80-something? Yeah. Well, it's passed. 
the black glove now has passed between us, I don't know, more than a hundred times, I imagine. You were trying to get Helen the Mirren to world. give it to him as well. It was extraordinary. Um, <laughs> Uh, more recently, you returned with, with Peter to play Tartania again at, uh, at Kingston. Yes. Uh, in, in, in 2010, having done it first for him, I think, in about 62 or 3. No, much earlier than earlier that. Earlier than that. 57. Wow. 57, first fairy. Um, 59, Hermia. You see, I was <laughs> growing up, Hermia. Uh, then um, 62, Tartania. Tartania. Mm. And... That, that seems an interesting um, bookend for your, your working relationship with Peter. Well, you know, Peter, I, I owe him. Oh, how I owe him. Uh, and I loved working with mm. him, just loved it. And when he said, would you come and do this at the Rose? I mean, I would have probably gone and done anything for him. Mm. But I thought, well, I, I didn't have to look at the script because I know the play so well. <laughs> I could do the whole play for you now if you wanted to. <laughs> Um, uh, but it was, we had a lovely time. I expect it was rather unsuitable, but it was a glorious time we had doing it. And more recently on stage, uh, for, for Michael Grandage's company, you did uh, the new play Peter and Alice. Yes, Ben Wishaw, with Ben Wishaw, yes. the blessed Ben Wishaw, yes. And did you enjoy, enjoy doing a new play at this I did point? enjoy, I did enjoy, and it was, uh, it was John Logan wrote it, who wrote Skyfall, and during rehearsals, um, I, uh, I, and a new play, you know, I had so many questions, and he was at rehearsal one day, and, um, or a couple of days, and I would go up and say, John, what, 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 I don't understand that. And we'd go on and on. He'd say, I'd say, John, John would, you, would you mind, would you mind um, explaining that? Why does she say... And I went on and on and on, and after a morning of this, and I'd gone up for, a, I don't know, the 60 something moment and said, John, he said, do you wonder I killed you off in Skyfall? <laughs> <laughs> Being killed off in Skyfall then. Yeah. Did you, um, <laughs> did you have any say in how you went? No. No? <laughs> No, they told me um, at the Wolseley. I've never been into the Wolseley since, actually. Um, <laughs> they told me about it. No, I, I, I'm, I'm joking. It's high time. It was high time. I had, um, I did seven, mm. and I had um, 70, 17 years of it, of being M. So mm -hmm. I had a full go at it. Yeah. And I loved it, just loved it. And I got to go to MI6 and have lunch. And I got to MI5 and have lunch, too. Mm. Wow. So I felt very grand. <laughs> Especially when those things go down in the road and your car drives in over. <laughs> <laughs> and then the great big wall comes down after you and you think, this is the real thing. <laughs> this is real. Wow. And when I was at MI5, they said, would you, would you, there are some people want to ask you some questions. So I said, oh, right. So we went in, there was a canteen full of people, absolutely full of people. And they kept asking me. So I said, you know, I... This is fake. We are fake. You're the actual real thing. You don't have to ask me. Like, ask yourselves. <laughs> Were you pleased to go out with a bang, though? That it wasn't just... Did you call didn't... it a bang? I a wouldn't bang. have called it a bang. <laughs> Falling over in the chapel. <laughs> I said to Sam Mendes, can't I act that I've been hurt a bit? He said, no. <laughs> he said, we've got to give them a surprise. But she didn't retire quietly, at least. No. No, she had a good go, didn't yeah. she? Poor old thing. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, when we sat here once before, I remember you... I mean, M wasn't even on the, on the horizon at that no. point. No. No, which is amazing. Um, and, the, and the other films, obviously the two great queens you have played, Victoria and Elizabeth, uh, that took you to... I mean, the men sat in that room in the 60s can eat their words, no, no, no longer with us, when, when you're now an Academy Award-winning actress. Um, None I, of them very good lookers, though, were they? Yeah. Those, those two queens. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's all in makeup, surely. It's all done with makeup. <laughs> um, I think you enjoyed doing Mrs. Brown a lot, is that right? I did enjoy it, and especially as we did it for television. And John, the blessed John Madden, um, uh, we did it in 30 days. And absolutely, you know, I, 
I had I had two black dresses and um, a different collar and a different brooch and you know and was made out of a you know pig's ear really and all the boys had one kilt and they'd get wet up on the hills and we'd all have to dry them and warm their feet and you know it was it was lovely but I had Finty my daughter played a daughter of daughter of mine so it was it, we had a lovely time and we were up in Scotland a great deal of the time. And did you get home with Mr Connolly? Yeah. <laughs> I say, yes. <laughs> yes, how could you not? But like, but Billy, like Steve Coogan, you know, who I've made Philomena with, you know, they're, I've said this, I mean, publicly, and I mean, they're stand-up comics of the kind of first order. Mm -hmm. But, and you think, well, I hope that they can rein it in a bit and think, well, of course, both of them, um, behave absolutely superbly and know all the lines and do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I just got Steve Coogan to make jokes all the time, really, beforehand <laughs> and things. But <clears throat> they were just sublime. There's no reason to think that somebody who is a stand-up comic shouldn't know a part and should... But it was, you know, you kind of thought, well, that's what my job... I'm not a stand-up comic. That's my, I'm the serious actor here. But <clears throat> it was lovely. I learned a lot from them. In the film about Marilyn, you played um, another Sybil, Sybil Thorndike. Mm. Did you ever work with her? No, I, yes. <clears throat> the only thing I ever did with her was um, um, uh, an evening with Rabindranath Tagore at the Old Vic, wow. where we were dressed in saris. She and uh, her husband, Louis Casson, Barbara Jefford, uh, I think John Neville was in it, I can't remember, it's 1958 I'm talking about. <clears throat> and um, it was a riot, actually. <laughs> but then, so I had known her a little mm. bit. And did you enjoy playing her? Yes, I think I did. I've never seen the film, actually. Of course. But I think I, I, think I enjoyed playing her. But she was an absolutely delightful person. She had the most silvery laugh of anyone I've ever, ever met before. I don't think I got to laugh in the film, mm. actually. <laughs> I couldn't have done it anyway. <clears throat> and another happy team seems to be the uh, Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Yes. That was um, eight weeks in India four years ago, and eight weeks again at the beginning of this year. So this is the second to do best. That will come out in February and March. And that was... I mean, acting with a mass of friends, you mm -hmm. know, was absolutely lovely. And we were all, that was with John Madden again. Um, and uh, I had never been to India, and I just couldn't wait to go back again. So it was lovely to go back this year again. And 70% of the crew came back to do the second film as well. So we knew everybody, and it was very special. And then... Uh, it's not, it's, it's, I think, a New Year's Day treat. You have a new leading man in Dustin Hoffman. Very badly behaved. <laughs> <coughs> yes. And this is for a Roald Dahl adaptation. It's a Roald Dahl adaptation of S.E.O. Trot. Um, so it was Dustin and a huge amount of tortoises and um, a lovely actor called Richard Cordery <coughs> and me, almost virtually. Uh, we had, yes, we had a heavenly time doing it, I must say. Directed beautifully by Dervla Walsh. Mm -hmm. And you'd not worked with Dustin before? No, no. I'd met him before. Yeah. Funny enough, I met him, I met him here. No, no. Did we do other places here? In no, the Cottesloe. in the Cottesloe. Other, place, other places was that Pinto Three trilogy. And um, the first one was about, was Martin Jarvis and... Anna Massey. Yes, Anna Massey, and Nigel Havers. Anyway, there were, yes. there were two plays, and then I was in the third play. And I had to be in bed all the time, kind of Alaska. It's about a woman with sleeping sickness. And I was sitting there one evening, waiting to start, talking to Anna, and suddenly round the curtain of the goddess Lowe came Dustin Hoffman's head. <laughs> <coughs> and he just got up and... Maybe he'd done it to the others, I don't know, but he said, hello, oh, hello, nice to see you. <laughs> that was it. Never saw him again. <laughs> <coughs> um, but we had a wonderful time 
doing this. It was very, very, very quick. Um, but we had a very nice time. And it'll go, yes, New Year's Day. New, New Year's Day? I think so. New I think Year's that's what Finty said. New Year's yeah. Day, I think it is. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and then you're currently filming The Hollow Crown, and you're, which, and you're in the Richard III yes. section as... The Duchess of York. And, and Richard's with, mother. With Benedict Cumberbatch. As yes, with Ben. She does nothing but moan. Not Ben, me. I do <laughs> nothing but moan. As the Duchess the of York. All the time she moans, all the time. <laughs> Never has a laugh. <laughs> Uh, I'm just looking through what's what's coming up. Also, um, Tulip Fever by Stoppard. Yes. And what are you in that? I'm the abbess. Another I had a night. very very nice week in the cloisters of Norwich Cathedral. That was extremely. It was straight after Ezio Trot. One day in between, mm. and so I thought, yes, I could squeeze that in. <laughs> <laughs> and so yes, I went and I had a lovely time. And you know those. Peregrine falcons are in the spire of Norwich Cathedral, and during a shot, because I was working this afternoon on it, and during a shot, suddenly, one per there was a terrible kind of kerfuffle, and I looked up, and one peregrine falcon had caught a pigeon, and it passed it to another one, and then it took it back, and all its babies ate it. <laughs> and that was in the middle of our scene. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no respect. No respect at all. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, how do you keep so busy? How do you... How do you keep so busy? Yeah, how do you do Because I'm asked to do the work and I don't turn it down. No. That's why. And will you ever stop doing it to this degree? No, don't... Let's talk of it. You would. No. Never. Well, I don't know. Good. You know, it's daft, isn't it, to stop doing something because you then don't remember how to do it and you fall over. It's, it's, it's hopeless to stop. And right. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not keen on that and I'm not keen on not learning something and it's wrongly reported I learn a poem every day. I don't learn a poem. I <laughs> say I learn something new every day, sometimes two lines of a poem. It got back to me that I learn a poem every day. So <laughs> I felt drunk with power. So. <laughs> What's next after you finish uh, I'm not quite York? sure. Yet. No. I'm not quite sure. I've got to do some press and talking about the Marigold Hotel mm -hmm. because um, that's coming up shortly, so we have to do the, all that. But apart from that... I'm not sure. Who knows? Touch wood. Well, maybe, maybe celebrate a birthday next week. You never Possibly. know. Possibly. You never know. We've got to do one thing. I wonder, could you put the house lights on? I promised we'd do a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to turn our backs on you before we go. And then we, oh, you can right. all wave. You can all wave. You're all in it. <laughs> if we don't go viral... I've never, I'll ever be... done this before. Here we are. Right. I'm very sure. oh, uh... Wave. I'm looking this way. No, you're looking that way. Oh. Is this right. it? That's it. That, that's us. Look, they're, they're waving. I see them smile. <laughs> I've taken so many. Right. <laughs> um, that actually happened. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as as uh, we thank Judy for her time, thank you so much for coming back. Let's just make that round of applause a bit of a happy birthday round of applause oh, no, for please. next week. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. They're singers, ignore, ignore that, ignore that. We can head that way. Ignore that.